from Implementation Specialists. Glad you came to our webinar today. We are going to talk about the latest changes that have happened in our WS tools for the key to act signature side. We also have the GP side. We're not going to cover those today, except for we might sneak in one or two, just to warn you. <laughs> but we'll focus more so on the key to act ones. And um, a lot of these we will also be announcing at Synergy coming up here shortly for key to act. And um, this is kind of your sneak peek at what, what we're going to be announcing, what we're going to be talking about as well as we'll even share the promotion that's coming up as well. All right, and with me today is Sandy. Sandy, are you still on? I am, hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and Sandy's gonna be helping out present today as well, um, as well as she's going to be looking at the questions and chat panels. And so if you have questions, comments as we go along today, feel free to enter those in there and we'll get your questions answered. Um, as well as if there's just general information that you're looking for, we certainly would be um, excited to share that information with you. So again, feel free to use the chat or question panel um, as we go through today. All right, Sandy, are we ready to roll? We're ready. We're recording. Um, Let's go. <laughs> okay, we're recording. <laughs> What's up? We're hoping everything works today. All right, we are going to jump in with void maintenance. And um, void maintenance is one of our newest tools that we've released already over the last six months. And if you've heard of void reopen, void maintenance is very similar to that. So void reopen focuses on service invoices, more of your TNM invoices from the service invoice window within Key to Act. Um, allows you to void those and actually return the cost and billing information back to the service call so you could re-invoice. Customers love that one. And so this is kind of the other side of service, if you want to say, on the maintenance side, where you set up your maintenance contracts, you do your maintenance invoicing. Um, same thing happens, right? Where sometimes you get a maintenance invoice generated, posted on the customer and realize it's the wrong dollar amount. Um, you didn't do the service this particular quarter, so you need to not bill that customer, right? Things like that happen. And so that's where void maintenance comes into play where it allows you to do the void within accounts receivable, go into your posted transaction entry window, bring up your transaction that you've posted to the customer, bring up the invoice, select void, and you're gonna see an additional question that asks you if you wanna update service as well. By saying yes, it'll go in and actually remove the transaction, the invoice, from your maintenance contract billing window and in invoice history window. And uh, we're gonna take a look at this one today so you can actually get to see it in action. But um, again, uh, the one thing is we're removing information, but I wanna make sure everybody's aware is we actually are copying that information into a historical table so that you can do reporting off of that information still and know that you did have one recorded as well as it's in receivables as a void. And so you can still get that detail and know exactly when that transaction happened. Okay, so again, exciting and fun one to see. So let me go ahead and bring up GP. And I got a few windows open here. So Sandy, can you see GP? I can. Okay, so that's a good sign. Let's go ahead, we'll bring up the service manager window and then the maintenance contract window. So here I'm just playing with sample data, customer 207. Um, pulled up their contract and in here, let's go in and take a look. So they have a few invoices that have been done against this contract and we're going to kind of zero in on this one here for me um, for March 1st of 2027 and it's for $500. You see that? Sandy, I'm going to keep you on your toes. Do you see that? Yep, I see it. I see it. <laughs> All right, so make note of that as well as we're going to go into the invoice history. And take a look here again we see that two invoices have gone against this contract and been sent out and um, again the 3 1 2027 is a service 120 document all right see that so too. Be, yeah yep there might be a quiz later so keep an eye on that <laughs> all right as well as all the attendees so here we go okay so we are now going to close that up and let's go into transactions you guys have probably all been into this window before, but posted transactions. And we're gonna enter in our customer, 207. We're gonna bring up our service invoice. 
lookup window, we see 108 and 120, and those were the two documents that were showing right in that window. Right, Sandy? Yep, correct. Right. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna say 120, and that's the one that we wanna to try to avoid. So we'll click Select. And again, this is standard um, GP window. So we'll go ahead and click Void. And this is the new part for void maintenance right here. Do you want to void in service management? Yes and no. If you select no, it'll void it in receivables just like it does today. But keep in mind that only voids it in receivables and then also updates your general ledger. It does not update service, so you would still have that invoice recorded against your contract. Right, so that's where if you want to say yes, it'll take care of that part for you. So we'll go ahead and say yes. And then upon closing the window, it's gonna do the posting, right? And actually we won't print these, you guys have seen these before. But let's go back to our contract. Have that open here. And let's go into our billing window. And you'll see here, we no longer have the um, year and period filled in and posting date, right? Because that invoice has no longer been built. As well as, let's go into the invoice history and look, that document is now gone. Don't worry, it's not really gone, right? It's just voided. And so there is also a smart list that you can pull up. Let me pull up my smart list that we also have out here. Let me refresh. And if you guys remember, it was for customer 207 that we did that void for. It's a contract 31. And again, um, we have all the fields loaded up in here into the smart list. But again, you could pick and choose which fields you wanted to see. But you can see the billable, subtotal, tax, etc. cetera, um, all that information. And again, you might not pull all these columns onto your smart list, but it does give you the capability within the view to see that document 120 is the document that we voided. So again, very useful information all at your fingertips. And now that service contract is ready again if you needed to change the dollar amounts, if you needed to re-invoice, you could. But again, it has that audit trail of what's happened um, so that you can keep track of that as well. And I'm gonna pause there, Sandy. Is there any questions or comments? Um, nothing in the question panel yet or comments. Okay. All right, well, I will flip back over to the slides. Let's see, so that was void maintenance. Again, one of our um, newest tools, but most popular too is that void reopen. So those two work hand in hand just on different pieces of service management. Um, auto charge, again, we just wanted to highlight a few changes here for auto charge. Um, some of the things like we have the ability to put in your own password now before it was hard coded. We've also added additional options into your rules definition. So if there's different fields that you want to um, update or be able to restrict your rules by, we've added those. Again, lots of fun things within auto charge, but probably the, the one that I wanna talk about today with the biggest, biggest bang, I guess I'll say, Sandy, is zone calculator. What is zone calculator? Again, this is a, a new tool that we'll be coming out with here. Um, and you can run zone calculator either on the Google side or Bing, whichever API that you support or prefer. But basically you go in to service and you say, these are my service hubs. This is where um, my technicians work out of. This is where I do my billing, whatever. What you determine are your service hubs, service centers. And then it can calculate, the zone calculate will calculate how far your customer locations are from those service hubs. And then what you can do is use auto charge to charge them certain dollar amount per distance. And what we've seen customers do is let's say zero to 25 miles, I'm gonna charge them $25. Zero to 50, I'm gonna charge them $50, et cetera. I mean, you can set those prices, that's um, as well as you set the criteria of the distance as well of what distance you are. So if there's zero to 25 miles, Let's say we're gonna call those zone one customers. Zero to 50, zone two. And that's the information that would be stored on that location record is whether they're zone one, zone two, et cetera. And again, you build an auto charge rule based on that 
for having the dollar amount automatically show up on their invoices. So fun stuff there as well. And um, again, if you wanted to see that in action, it's hard to show that one because it's um, running behind the scenes when it's calculating the zones and putting them on your customer locations. But then again, you could see that in, in work, I guess, when you get into the auto charge window. Going to the next one, Sandy. You stop me if you need to, okay? <laughs> okay. Yeah, nothing <laughs> nothing so far for questions. So remember to chat those in if you've got them. Thank you. Great. Uh, next up is Quick Mail. And this one, we are actually uh, going to be releasing version three of Quick Mail. So we've continued to just make additional changes to this product based on customer suggestions and needs. So with version three, um, so I'll do a little recap and talk about version three. So version one, really rewriting. Um, I mean, we had version one out, version two, we re rewrote um, from a technology standpoint, as well as put in new setup windows, made it so you could invoice documents based on roles and email those out, um, templates, you know, updated all those type of things. Uh, for version two, we supported service invoicing uh, by in your service invoicing window in your job cost invoicing. So version three, we are bringing out maintenance invoicing as well as batch, the ability to do maintenance, um, I should say, the ability to do emailing by batches or pick and choose which ones in your batch you want to do your emailing for. So more of a mass document, that's part of version three. And this will be something that we will be showing also at Synergy as well. So yay, very excited to get this out into people's hands. Um, because again, you could, let's say you have a batch of, you know, 100 service invoices, it gives you the ability to pull it up into a new window by, by different restrictions, whether it's customer division, batch, et cetera, um, into this window. And then you can pick and choose, these are the, hundred that I want to email out and have it automatically send out those emails. Or you can have it stop and ask you every time if you want to do more attachments, do more, all of those type of things that you can do with the standard quick mail today. So very cool. I know both Sandy and I are very excited to get this out into customers' hands. Um, we do have several already using it for the job cost and service, but we're getting lots of requests for the batch side, being able to do yep, multiple, yeah. <laughs> multiples <laughs> at once, as well as the maintenance part, right? Because those maintenance invoices, you know, you automatically generate them, you know, once a week, once a month, whatever your, your process tells you to, and then getting those um, electronically set out, um, which has been very popular lately, especially around COVID practices, right? Of getting electronic emails. So any other questions there, Sandy? And our and our questions are chat box? Um, no, not at this time. We have a quiet group today. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got more to talk about, so we will keep going. <laughs> on to select job transfer. So this is on the job cost side. There is a select cost transfer also on the service side. And um, again, we've made some changes there as well, but I really want to highlight the changes here on the select job transfer. The biggest changes that we've created or made recently is the ability to transfer historical costs. And let me explain what that means. So in Select Up Transfer today, you're really working with transactions in the current period, which works great if you you know, recently made the change or made the issue that you need to go correct or transfer from one job to another. But what we find is some people are, you know, recording transactions, you know, for a few months and then they want to transfer them, you know, that was kind of their startup job and they want to transfer them to a different job or they want to uh, consolidate some things, you know, whatever the reason is, right, and transfer those costs. But they were running into, they were historical, right, past this month end. And so what we're doing now is changing where we're gonna have more of a historical window where you can pick and choose which transactions you would want to move from one job to another. And it won't physically move the transactions because you've done month end, you've done your POCs, all of those type of things. So we'll actually just be moving the cost with the general ledger transaction, but you get to pick and choose what 
transactions will build that GL transaction. So what cost you posted to your job that you want to move to a second job, and it'll do that by doing the general ledger journal entry for you. So that's what we mean by moving historical transactions. Sandy, anything there? Comments? Um, nope. Okay. Keep rolling. All yeah. right. I will. <laughs> Another new um, tool that we're going to roll out at Synergy is the PO copy paste. And how I'll, how this piece will work is very similar to the GL copy paste that we introduced. I think that was last year. Time just flies, but <laughs> it's about that time. Um, where you get the ability to to bring data off of Excel into GP and into the purchase order entry window is what we're talking about in particular. So for this PO copy paste, you would fill in the top information where you put your date, your vendor, um, and then when you get down to your line items, we're gonna have the ability to select additional, you know, paste information in. And again, it'll come from an Excel document, an Excel template that we'll provide for you. That as long as you have your individual lines on there, you just highlight them, copy, and then paste them in. And again, they could be against a job, against a service call, or on build. And even a combination of all those three together all in one purchase order. Because you specify the job, service call, or on build per line, and that's the data that we're going to be bringing in. And um, customers that we've talked to about this one are very excited about it because it really helps with those kind of recurring items that you need to keep ordering and apply to service calls or apply to jobs. Um, and it'll automatically do this for you then, getting that data in there for you as fast as you can without having to type 100 line items. So very cool, very excited. The next one I wanna talk about is the Key to Act Connector for Avalara. And I put V2 behind it because you've probably heard us talk V1, V2. And uh, this one, again, between V1 and V2 was really technology changes that happened um, actually on the Avalara side where they changed how what technologies they were using in order to do the tax calculations. And so we as an integrator with the Avalara GP connector needed to change our technology and how we were supplying the data um, up into the Avalara cloud. And so that's really where the V2 comes into play. And so if you're working with us, we'll ask you, are you on V1 or V2, <laughs> what version? Um, and if you're on V2, it actually says V2 in your version information. But we added some more functionality also to V2, and that was the job cost project billing now also supports the Avalara Avatax calculations. So, and we have some customers already asking about that, so we're excited to see that go, as well as our void products. You know, I've talked about void reopen and void maintenance today. We have the, the hook in now. So when you void something, let's say void reopen, you go in and you void a service invoice, it actually will be updating the Avalara cloud for that void information as well. We've made the connection where the Avalara connector works with void reopen, and GP and sends that information so everything is set correctly. So if you use all of those products, make sure you're on the latest version, talk to us about that, and we'll make sure you got all the products working together. All right, Sandy, anything in the questions no, or no, comments? Yeah, quiet group. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> then we're gonna move on to journal entry hold, and, and Sandy's gonna talk about this. I'll actually be quiet for, for a oh, little bit. Oh, okay, sure. Okay. Yeah, so journal entry hold is another one of our newer uh, WS tools. And what it does is it allows you to put a individual GL transaction on hold rather than having to place the entire batch on hold. And once the transaction is on hold, we make it really easy to see that. There's several visual cues. Um, the transaction number shows in red, Font, or yeah, red color, the, the window title says it's on hold, the post button's disabled. And so then this prevents the transaction from being posted until you know, you're done with it and ready to post it. And it also prevents posting of the batch assigned to the transaction. And uh, one other nice feature that 
with this tool is we've provided the ability to require a password to add or remove a journal entry hold. So um, another really cool tool that's um, easy to set up and use. Especially around month end, year end, those type of things, right? Where it's like yeah. you got the transaction in, you don't want it to be posted yet, you know, maybe it's really for the next month. Um, but in order to safeguard that, right, you can kind of put it on hold and then obviously you have to have a password if you have that set up, right, in order to uh, yeah, in order exactly. to post it. Makes somebody think twice about posting it, right? If they gotta enter in a <laughs> password. <laughs> so Good job. Thanks, Sandy, for jumping in sure. and covering that one. All right, as we said, Synergy is coming up. And for those um, attending Synergy, we are a Three Cups sponsor for Synergy. And we are going to be hosting a virtual booth as well as three sessions at Synergy. So you'll have the ability to hear about tools specific for job cost users, tools for service, and then our whole GP line of tools as well. And so those are Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. As well as our virtual booth, we would invite any customer to come in and get a demo of any, any kind of product that they wanna dig into further. Again, a lot of times in our webinars and even in these sessions, um, you know, they're 45 minutes, so we won't be able to dig deep, but we'll be able to hit the highlights. And so again, I encourage anyone to come to Synergies, um, stop by our virtual booth, kind of dig into that. We are also gonna have some games going on. I don't want to put the cat out of the bag there, but um, some games for some prizes that people can take part in as well. We have um, are doing some specific topics in our virtual booth as well. For example, you know, SQL tips. If you, we're going to have some assigned times to some of those special topics, so we'd encourage you to check those out. All oh, that'll be listed out on our virtual booth. And again, that's if you're attending Synergy. And in even if you're not, this next slide will be um, important to you as well, as we do have some Synergy promotions that are gonna happen here. So, um, and, and, and if you wanna start on them today, we'd be okay with that too. The uh, buy three tools, get three um, free, and there's you know free installation, pay the enhancements, those kind of things on the additional tools. And um, we can walk you through these different promotions where the buy three, get three, buy five, get five. And um, again, there's Synergy promotions, but even if you're not attending Synergy, uh, these promotions do go through the month of May. So, um, you know, fight, get get a hold of us, get us, you know, walking through some different demos for you, talk through the benefits, how does it work, how, those kind of things. Um, we would love to, you know, talk those details with you and then help get a quote in place for you. All right, Sandy, any more questions or comments out there? Sorry, I was muted. There, it shows that there is one, and I'm having a hard time pulling it out to see the whole thing. Um, I can see it and grab the question if you like. Yeah, please, because I can't get it, the whole thing to expand. Okay, okay, um, okay. I can. I got him. Okay. Okay. Sure. <laughs> there's like, there's three of them. Hold on, you're Yeah, like, I know. <laughs> I was slack and I was looking at the chat. Yes. Uh, let's see. Let's get a oh, batch invoicing work with job cost. Well, batch invoicing work with job cost. Oh, I think that one was about quick mail and not in version three. Um, so version three, we're focusing in on the service invoice and on the maintenance invoice. But I appreciate this, the um, reminder. Also, and I won't call out the customer, <laughs> um, that they want to look for job match invoicing of job costs and be able to electronically send those. I believe that is where that question comes from. So I think I got that answer. If I'm wrong in how, if that's not the product you're talking about, let me know. Um, job costs and I just service invoices. Yes. Okay. So I think all of those go together. So it's um, you can do job cost invoices today individually with the with quick mail, not in the batch mode. And that'll be true for V3. And then stay tuned though. I appreciate that suggestion. Okay, so I think and the other one I'm not sure. Document move to history. Not sure which product that is. So if that person wants to add a little bit more. We can answer that. 
All right. Um, for void maintenance, if document is moved to history, and I assume that means in receivables, yeah, you would need to get it so you can void because it has to have the GP, um, the ability to be voided within GP. And so there are other tools that we have on the GP side that can help you move documents back as well. And so making sure that you can do the um, RM unapply um, if you have that tool or you know working with us to get it back into the open, um, but it has to be open so you can do the voids. So exactly right. All right, I think I got them all, Sandy. Do you see anything else? Uh, no, I think that's all of them. Yeah. Excellent. And we greatly appreciate those questions and comments. That and making sure you're paying attention because I know I quiz <laughs> everybody. I can't quiz everybody else that they're on mute. So, <laughs> um, all right. Well, that are all the tools that we're going to talk about today. And in that, to be honest, there are more that we've made changes to over the last six plus months as well. But um, come to Synergy. If if you uh, are coming to there, please stop by and see us in the virtual booth. Come check out our um, new tools. We'll talk through all of those, do demos throughout the day as well if you want. Come to our sessions. And um, again, if there's tools you're interested in, you want to talk through from a quote perspective of, okay, I'm looking at this buy three, get three. These are what I'm thinking. You know, we can help figure that all out for you. So just just let us know. Here's the contact information. And again, um, this is Cheryl and Sandy is our helper. I mean, both of us can walk you through different demos and, and answer questions for you. So thanks again for joining today. Sandy, any last minute comments from you? Um, no, I think you covered it all. And thank you everyone for coming. Yeah, we come to Synergy and learn more. Excellent, great. And we are finishing like almost right on time. So again, thank you. Appreciate your time today and um, have a good afternoon. Thanks guys. Bye-bye.